That's why some of us came up with the concept of successionist. But it was a half story. <laughs> now realize it, but this is a successionist. You know, it was like you are describing others, but you are not describing yourself. Uh, you are describing others, or you are describing a strand, uh, a trend. Uh, uh, but you are giving the impression it's the only, only one. Uh, and we are really not uh, uh, talking about uh, society as, as a whole. I think that uh, we, one can say, and, and I do say, without uh, fear of, of being contradicted, that uh, in the heyday of factions in the ruling party in Zambia, when, uh, when they were like the Majuru faction and the Nangabo faction, they both had one common thread that uh, 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 explains the concept of uh, uh, successionist. They both were about succeeding the president. They, were, they both were about uh, uh, either uh, with some expectation, perhaps even if you want, legitimate expectation, uh, thought they would have the baton handed to them, or one of them, can't hand both of them, uh, to say, chef, give me, or chef is going to give me, or chef has promised to give me. Then with that expectation, you could say legitimate, or no legitimate expectation. He just wanted to have it by any means necessary, including just grabbing it. You know, as a I, 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 you know. So, but they were contending. I think you, uh, you can say uh, that, conclude along those lines without really uh, fear of uh, being contradicted. Uh, but when one of them left, and um, uh, formed or you know, transformed into a party, uh, a situation was created, but then we had uh, the other that remained. Uh, what I think is important to understand is that when they were there together, and that was not long time ago, and uh, in terms of social processes and political processes, they are not like the life of an individual. Two, three years is a very short time when you're describing political processes. Uh, Grand, like, you know, uh, think that there has been a fundamental transformation within two, three years. Usually it doesn't happen like that. But what I think we need to appreciate is that whenever you have successionists, people who want to succeed a leader, uh, you must ask yourself, who is the rest? Who, who are the other people in a situation of successionist? And if you look at our uh, political party, it is said historically a successionist. Uh, and, and, and surely nobody would think that then everyone was a successionist. I think, and there's somebody who helped me not too long ago, I won't say who it was, who asked me a, a very simple question. Is that we, we, we understand what a successionist is or what successionists are. The people want to succeed. Uh, and usually, and I'm going to quickly show this, I'm going to give the, the uh, typology of the successionist. Usually, one thing that a, a successionist um, don't want is to succeed the leader through elections. Usually, successionists are afraid of elections. They want to be given. You know, the, the elections are oh, no, a big problem. Um, so, this person said to me, What is the opposite of successionist? It's a better question than saying, This is Lacoste, and then you say, This is Dufort. Why don't you ask, What's the opposite of Lacoste? You know? <laughs> but you see, it becomes an absurd question. Because uh, there is no opposite. But if you frame this as successionist, people want to succeed, you can legitimately or rationally ask, if you are not a successionist, what are you? Don't you think so?
If you are not a success, successionist or who, who or what is an op or the opposite of successionist, the answer is very simple. It's loyalist. <laughs> so if you wanted to be very accurate in describing our state of politics, you would have to say they are successionist and the loyalist. Stop this business of looking for useless animals like Lacoste, like what, what, uh, don't call people uh, uh, this predatory animals, you know. Uh, describe what they are, successionists. That's what they are, they want to succeed. There are others who are not concerned, preoccupied about uh, succeeding, uh, and who are not successionists, therefore. Uh, and, 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 and who are many, many in the body politic, many in the party. Who are they? They are loyalists. They are loyal. They are loyal to the leader. They are also loyal to the uh, party. They are also loyal to the country. And they are loyal to the legacy. It's about leadership and legacy. They are, they, they are loyal to the leader and they want to make sure that the legacy that is represented by the leader, the legacy that is the embodiment of the party, lives on, carries on. They understand that uh, Zimbabwe is unique, stands unique as a country because of that legacy because of that leadership, and they don't define or see leadership in individual terms. They see it as a collective, as a product of the experience and the history of the country, not only since independence, but since the liberation struggle. Since the people, the indigenous people's reaction, response to its colonization, this, the majority of the people who are out there you can, it is wrong to analyze politics in any country by focusing on two people here versus a group there and leave everyone else and think you are doing a good job. It's wrong. It's wrong to have a template that sees politics from the perspectives of a few set of individuals. When we know that we are a country, when we know that there are people out there, there are communities out there, politics is about them. You cannot have the appropriate uh, construction of politics by focusing on a duo, a trio, <coughs> or a group. It is wrong. And this is why something has gone fundamentally wrong. In, in our country. But if you were to appreciate, I, it, it, there are reasons why some people uh, are, suc uh, are successionists. And if you look around, it's not only Zimbabwe that is at this situation of successionists, especially if you look at uh, post-independent uh, Africa. In all these countries, whether you're looking at Zambia, uh, Malawi, Kenya, uh, Tanzania, they have been this successionists. And invariably, successionists are those who have come a long way with the leader they want to succeed. You will never have Omafiki Zolo, a successionist. It's not possible. A successionist is always the guy from way back, from back in the day. It cannot be anyone else. Except that. And this, and, and, but the story of successionists is that they will say to you, no, you know, me have been very loyal to you, and I've come a long way with you, you know, we've been together 50 years, blah, 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 you know. <laughs> but that is the one, that is the, the typology. Typically, you want to find a successionist, is the guy you, 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 you know. This other one, no, I mean, how come? It's not possible. It's, it is not possible. Um, I, I don't want to suggest a, a normative or a moral judgment about 
right or wrong, good or bad. But in politics, and certainly in political science, we've got to come up with political or sociological types for what they are and use them to describe the situation in a way that leaves us wiser. If not, at least understand it. Now, because of that historical context, and I'm going to jump some, uh, some things so that um, I, I facilitate a, a, a discussion. I, 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 uh, because of uh, uh, its historical setting uh, and, 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 and the fact that successionism is produced uh, by um, historical developments and so forth, we can identify its, its defining features, its key features. In the same way, we can identify the key features of royalists. And very quickly, a, a common and fundamental feature of successionist is, and this from an ideological point of view, because if you are discussing or uh, explaining politics, in the end, you must address the ideological question. What is the ideological basis? What is the ideological foundation? The, the ideological basis and the ideological foundation of successionism is entitlement. Entitlement. It's my turn, if, if it's the individual, or it's our turn, if it's the group. We've been at this for a long time. It's about time I get to the button. Why? Because I am entitled to it. Because we are entitled to it. Because we died for this thing. <laughs> it's ours. It's not theirs. Who the hell are these? <coughs> Where did these people come from? Who are they? We were not with them when we started this journey. They were not there. We are entitled. It is ours. <clears throat> uh, entitlement plays out in different ways uh, from political situation or uh, setup or, or country. But whether you are looking at successionists in Zambia, Kenya, Tanzania, they will be saying we are entitled to it. Anyone who plays or pursues politics from that point of view uh, is likely uh, to be a successionist. And, and the foundation is that of, of, of entitlement. Therefore, uh, ideologically speaking, it's likely to be about personalities. It will, if it's entitlement, the question becomes, who are the ones who are entitled? And they'll say, it's us, and among us, who is our senior? It's him. Finish. Personality. And uh, if it's entitlement and it's personalities, and uh, the next question, entitled to what? Entitled to positions. This position is him entitled to it. This one is him. This, we're entitled, and we must have it. No questions asked. It's, these are our things. That means we're entitled to power. So what, what do we want? We don't want uh, to hear about constitutional things, because if you start bringing constitutional things, you will end up with a notion that in terms of the law, all are equal. And that position uh, is, 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 is uh, antithetical to entitlement, anti-constitution. Uh, if we are entitled, should we vote? No. Why should we vote? You mean you don't know who should get this? So, so, so no, no, no voting. Uh, there's no uh, voting. And if there's no voting, that means there's no people participation. I think you can take that template and apply it to whatever situation you want and, and, and arrive at your own conclusions. And, 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 and from a, 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 a political scientist's point of view, uh, I guarantee you 
you would arrive at a rational decision or rational conclusion or rational understanding of uh, the, the dynamics, the state of play uh, in our country. Final, <clears throat> what, is, uh, what are the defining features of uh, a loyalist? <laughs> in our context, in the context of post-independence Africa, therefore, and we find similar situations in Zambia, Kenya, Uganda, Malawi, and so forth. The one important feature of uh, loyalists has been around the national question. The national question of who are we as this new nation? What is this nation about? And that national question has invariably always been about unity, national unity. Loyalists are preoccupied with the question of national unity, the inclusivity of the new body politic. Are we including everyone? Are we defining ourselves in personalized, individualized, or group terms on the one hand, or we are in fact uh, looking at ourselves, promoting, engaging uh, in the kind of politics that unite us, that promote those things which we have in common. This is very basic to the loyalist. It's, it's, so it's not about uh, the individual the personality, the position, it's not about the entitlement, it's the, all of us, all us with the national unity question. And if you look at the founding fathers, that is what preoccupied them. That was the question that preoccupied uh, uh, the late VP Joshua Nkomo. Uh, that is the question that uh, 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 preoccupied uh, 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 the founding fathers from PF Zapo and Zanu PF the national unit question. And it's a very serious question. <laughs> That's where you find the majority of the people whom you lose when you start talking like Costa and, and G40. You lose them. But they are in the national unit report. Those are the people. And secondly, where the national question is resolved, it's resolved in order to deal with the livelihood question. The question of the wealth of the nation, the sources of that wealth, and how that wealth will be exploited and shared for the benefit of the whole nation, the livelihood. And we have answered that question in Zimbabwe from a loyalist point of view in very far-reaching ways, uh, from the uh, land uh, uh, question in the first place, and to the uh, indigenization and economic empowerment question in the second place. To say the wealth of this nation is impossible unless we utilize our God-given resources starting with the land and the subsoils, the stuff that's under that land, our minerals. And, you, and, and the majority are about that. And, 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 and you know, not only do you lose them, but you distort the issues, blare the questions, and, and raise uh, secondary issues, which are meaningless because they don't speak to the livelihood of everyone else. You start talking about the livelihood of G40. Eh, hey, the 50 bedrooms, eh, hey, there's what, you know, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, but but, but you, you, you lose the majority. The third issue <coughs> of fundamental importance to the loyalist is the participation of everybody. And it's the democratic question. You can't have uh, politics that are progressive and they are, they are all based on entitlement. Mwam, I went to war in order to have this. And when I was doing this, I don't know what that one was doing or that one was doing, but I tell you, they were not with us. 
so they can't participate. And yet, the one of the major reasons for our, our, our liberation struggle was to empower the majority by giving them the vote, by enabling them to participate in making decisions about their livelihood. And if you find yourself in a politics that now is uh, sidelining them or excluding them, then there's a problem. We are leaving the loyalists. People are loyal to that legacy. They are loyal to the legacy of livelihood, fighting for our livelihoods. They are loyal to the legacy of involving them in making decisions about their lives, the lives of their families, of their communities, enabling them to participate in shaping their future, their aspirations. Very key to the uh, goals of the liberation struggle, the participation. And then the fourth one is equity and e equality. Equity, fairness. Equality being treated uh, equally, uh, the gender equality, youth uh, in particular. But uh, those still with us, who will lead the forefront of the liberation struggle. <laughs> That's very, very important. And you can't see, uh, uh, where do you see it if you are using the uh, G40 uh, Lacoste dichotomy? These are the people who are loyal to their history as communities, loyal to the leaders who have been produced by that history, loyal to the founding fathers, President Mugabe, Joshua Nkomo, and, 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 and what that meant for everybody else. And then there is the peace and stability, order. The person out there is very interested and is aware that if there is no peace, if there is no order, if there is no stability in the country, then the goals of national unity, the goals of uh, the wealth of the nation, uh, exploiting our resources will not be achieved. <coughs> One thing that the successionists want is uh, instability because uh, uh, it is critical to a manifesto that is not based on elections. They've figured out that one easy, sure way of getting to power outside elections is instability, protests, demonstrations, endless one, for whatever, it's like today we're demonstrating, okay, I'm coming, you, know, you, don't, you, don't, you don't have to worry what it is about. They promote that. People with, with a sense of entitlement will say, it's mine. They think the only way to get rid of the leader is if you surround the leader with instability, disorder, and so forth. And lessons elsewhere, is that they actually run away, some leaders, when the instability is everywhere. You, know? you say, ah, the leader is gone. <coughs> it's not the guy, well, the leader is gone, so we have taken over, and for the next three months, we have the National Transitional Authority, and they use such terms. You know, when people tell you NTA, and uh, Salvation Committee, and so forth, it consider uh, produce disorder. Uh, and uh, peace, Order and stability is very important to everyone out there, the people in their homes, in order for them to have a chance to fend for their families. There must be order. When there's disorder, they can't do that. They become very vulnerable. But the successionist loves disorder. And then, sovereignty. It's part of the loyalist uh, menu. Because that's what gives you the, or empowers you to make decisions about your country, the internal decisions, what are you going to do, as well as the uh, external decisions. Sovereignty is very key. And what follows is leadership. You know, and that leadership is not just about the individual leader, but it is a, uh, um, shared leadership. This is why it's important 
who are our founding, uh, founding uh, fathers, founding mothers, founding leaders. It's very important because uh, there's something about that which is the foundation of leadership, which we have said generation 40 <coughs> as a demo demographic group needs to learn from, needs to copy, needs to emulate, needs to improve. As they move on into the future, saying the foundations of this leadership are the Joshua Nkomo, Robert Mugabe, <coughs> Herbert Shitepo, <coughs> Jason Moyo. I thought I should put, one, put a Moyo in there. <laughs> <laughs> and then, lastly, it's the legacy. A people without a legacy. There is a, a, this thing people call, call Generation 40 or G40. It has no legacy. It's just, a, a, you know, something that somebody has come up with to describe uh, an imaging. You know, uh, Generation 40 are uh, Zimbabwean uh, millennials, the, the, the new millennials from Zimbabwe. Our uh, new century type of uh, uh, people with new values and they connect with their counterparts, their global counterparts, you know. Uh, but they have no legacy. They're just uh, coming onto the, you know. And, and it is dangerous to, to then associate a, a legacy-less duo with serious power and so forth, you know. The legacy is founded in those who fought for the liberation of this country, those who founded this country. And this is why for many people, uh, and, 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 and many people who are young, President Mugabe represents that legacy that's important to respect and carry on. It's a, it's a legacy issue. And an important, if to, to Americans it was a George, I mean a, a George Washington thing, to us it's, it's, it's a Robert Mugabe thing. And, and, and this is why the president actually is more in tune or the young people who really think in legacy terms and so forth and understand they are the ones who are taking over. No doubt about that. They care about that legacy. They don't want it bastardized. Whereas the one who thinks he's entitled, entitled to the, 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 uh, uh, the successionist is actually shooting that legacy down. Some of them, they, 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 they present themselves as like, a, we want to make a break with the past. Uh, you might hear them occasionally saying, we want a deng, a deng, deng. You know that uh, Chinese guy who broke from uh, Mao? A, a deng scenario, paradigm. Uh, new, no, we want to do th uh, new things, you know. Uh, a new Zimbabwe uh, kind of thing. We want to break with the past. There is no country built like that. And, and, and make no mistake about it, we are not going to be the first country to do that. All countries that have tried to break from the past have uh, entered into a bottomless uh, pit of uh, endless conflict. All countries that have broken or tried to break from the past, like Somalia. The, 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 you know, it, it is a non-starter. It's a, a proposition that spells disaster for the majority who are loyalists. Because they know that, you know, the future is always <laughs> built from a strong past, enduring values. And that is why in our constitution, if you look at the founding principles and values of our constitution in section 3, uh, there are nine. The last one, <coughs> which is the ninth, is recognition for and respect of the liberation struggle. It's a legacy issue. It's not an individual person's issue. It's not an entitlement issue. It's about values and ideals that bind all generations with each generation finding a new and dynamic interpretation or way of moving that agenda forward. So, it's very clear. You have on the one hand, and, and it is not a permanent situation, but clearly now 
It's been such for the last 20 years and it's getting to the tail end a situation where successionists are on the loose. On the one hand. On the other hand, you have loyalists who are the majority. And, 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 and uh, uh, the jury is still out. Will, the, will successionists get their way? A number of them haven't gotten their way. Uh, most of them have fallen by the wayside. More often than not, successionists never succeed, actually. More often than not. It's very rare in political history for a successionist to succeed because they are going against the grain. They, they, they have to. If you are an, a, a, a successionist who believes in entitlement, it means you are going against this other guy and that one and that one and all these guys who can't claim the same entitlement on the same basis as you, but who believe in the Constitution, which says everyone is equal. I mean, the genius of the new Constitution is Section 56, which has introduced equality for everyone. And that introduction of equality for everybody means down with entitlement. So, with, uh, with these remarks, I hope you will uh, join me in burying G40. There's nothing from G40. If it's those two guys, Jonathan Moyo and uh, Sylvia Gasukwele, to help with them, let them mind their own business. And let, no, uh, don't let the country's business be driven uh, by just two guys. Two. One, two. It's not right. Think about the majority. Think about the people. The we, the people who are in the constitution. They are more important. The new constitution says uh, legislative authority is derived from the people. Executive authority is derived from the people. Judicial authority is derived from the people. Think about the people. It's the people who voted for President Mkapi. People in ZANU PF, people in, in the form of the electorate in the country. And that is what matters the most. That is what needs to be guarded, jealously, protected, improved, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, passed on from generation to generation. That's better politics for me. Thank you very much.